Hello, everyone, and welcome to this bonus episode of Microbrews. This episode is based on comments I got from both the hemocytometer video that I posted, as well as about the uh, counting cells using Fiji. And the comments I got were all people asking me questions on ways that this could perhaps be automated. And there actually is a way it can be semi-automated. So I'm gonna show that to you today. Now the secret to making this work is how you focus on your image. Normally we would try and get our cells into sharp focus. But if you want to do this semi-automated counting, what you actually want to do is slightly defocus the microscope so that the cells appear dark relative to the background and relative to the grid of the hemocytometer. This will make it fairly simple for a piece of software to identify the cells relative to the background. So here's the image I took. Uh, hopefully you can see here that all of these cells are in fact right quite dark compared to the background. We do have some clusters of cells and debris here, but those can be dealt with, or in all honesty, at, at the cell density up here, they don't even really matter that much. I am gonna quickly start the macro recorder. Don't worry about what this is for at the moment. It's just something I want to discuss at the end, but I have to activate it early. So to do that, we can go plugins, macro, record, and this will automatically basically record the different steps that I do. So what we're gonna start with here is our image. And the first thing we actually need to do is convert this image into something that our computer can easily interpret. So this is a color image, which is more difficult. And what we want is a black and white image. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna go image, color, split channels. And what this has now done is it separated out the blue, the green, and the red color channels. And what we wanna find is the, the color channel where there's the biggest difference between the cells and the background, and that's this red channel here. So we're just gonna close actually the blue and the green. The next thing we need to do is crop the image down to the particular area of the hemocytometer where we do our counting, which in the case of mine is this four by four grid area here. But you might notice that our, we're actually slanted very slightly. So I, I didn't quite have the hemocytometer horizontal when I uh, took the picture. So we can fix this. So I'm gonna click this tool here, the straight line tool. And if you look at the box where right now it says straight segmented or freehand lines, uh, that's actually gonna show you the angle shortly of this line when I draw it. I'm just gonna draw it down the right hand side here, go from corner to corner, and you can see that we're off by about 0.5 degrees. So to rotate, we can go image, transform, rotate, we're gonna put in 0.5. We wanna make sure grid lines is set to zero. The interpolation doesn't really matter. And if we click this fill with background color, what it'll do is any regions of the image it has to sort of expand to make the rotation fit, it'll just fill in with black. So this doesn't really matter for what we're doing today, but it's not bad to have that checked. And that image is now rotated and everything should now be relatively square. So now what we wanna do is crop the image down to just the counting area, which on my hemocytometer is this four by four grid here. So to do that, we're gonna pick the rectangle box, selection, and we're going to drag and select this region of the image. So that's our area where we wanna do our cell counts. And then we're gonna go, sorry, image, crop. And this is now that cropped image, and you can see here better maybe the cells and how they're a little out of focus and how they're darker than the, the foreground. So the next thing that we want to do is do what's called thresholding the image. And what that means is we want to tell the computer what intensity range it should consider to be signal and what intensity range it should be to considering background. And so to do that, we're going to go image, adjust, threshold. Now we can do this manually, but if you can, it's nice to try and find one of the automated thresholding techniques that work well, because if you take your pictures in a consistent way, instead of having to manually figure out the threshold each time, you can just try some of the different settings. And so there's all different variations here um, that make sort of different computational assumptions. Um, and you can kind of go through these and see what worked best. I know a lot of times for me, the Otsu method is a good one and that's reasonably clean. And actually the default one's not too bad either, which is a variation on that Otsu. So we'll just use the default, we'll hit apply, and this is now threshold of the image. So again, I want you to look up here as I move the cursor around. And here you can see my cursor's on uh, the background where it's white, and you can see it says value equals zero. And that means that the intensity of the image here is zero. 
Whereas if we move over the cell, you can see the value is 255. So this is what we would call a thresholded image, meaning that our cells are signal and they're, they're at a high value and the background is zero. Now you might notice though, we have some neighboring cells that aren't well separated in our image. So this would decrease the accuracy of our count. So we can actually address that by going to process binary watershed. And what this will do is, is sort of try and find those spots where you have cells fused together and separate them out. So we'll click on watershed and didn't do too much here, but here you can see, for example, this line here wasn't there before, same thing here. So it did separate some of these out into separate cells. And that is one of the, the costs that come with this is it's maybe not as perfect as counting manually. You sort of sacrifice um, accuracy a little bit for speed but the important thing is you sacrifice accuracy in the same way across multiple images. And that because of that, you should always have sort of the same degree of error. And I've actually found that the error from this tends to be less than my error from counting manually. So now we've thresholded, we've watershed, let's do the actual counts. And so the counts can be found under analyze, analyze particles. And this is an automated uh, particle analysis system. And there's a few different things that we can do here. Uh, so one is we can tell to ignore small objects or, or large objects for that matter. So for example, here we have some points. These are just leftover signal from the grid lines. So if we set this to maybe four or five, we'll probably eliminate most of those from our counts. We could eliminate some of these larger ones if we knew roughly how large they were by um, setting this infinity to some other smaller value. But we actually know that most of these are clusters of yeast cells, so we probably don't want to eliminate them. Now under circularity, again, you can filter out things that are not circular enough. So if you had long straight lines, you could you know, set the circularity at say 0.5 and that would filter out long straight lines, but we're not gonna fiddle with that today. And then under show, there's a lot of different things you can have it show. I like just to have it show the outlines because it's a good measure of whether or not it worked. And just make sure display results, clear results, and summarize are checked because this will give you the information that uh, we really are looking for. And then you just click OK. So here you can see is our auto detection. If we look where we had um, this random noise, you can see that most of that was not counted, although some of it was. Uh, so if we reran this, we might want to increase the size of that area that we ignore. But otherwise, it's done a really good job of recognizing cells. It doesn't look like we've missed anything. And conversely, it also looks like we caught even you know those bigger objects. So that's good, it's a good quality control. Here, under the summary, of course, is the number we're really interested in, under count, which is 259 cells. When I count this manually, I come up with between 262 and 268. Uh, so even I can't be consistent enough, um, but we're very, very close. We're within a few percentage of the value I get from counting. So you can see that if I wasn't talking through this and just showing it to you, this would have been very quick, much quicker than counting manually. But I want to point out one other aspect of this, and that is this macro recorder that's been running in the background. Every time I've run a command, it's recorded what that command was. So if I hit create, it's going to convert that recording into program that I can rerun that would automatically do everything that I've done here. With some caveats though, you do actually need to come into this and go through and, and edit some of these lines. And I'm not gonna go into those details today. Likewise, uh, where we did the rotation and the square around our area of interest, that you would actually want to rewrite to prompt you as the user to do that part manually, which actually is very simple to do in, in, the, in the macroing language. And you could very easily then have a relatively automated uh, script where you would load up your image click run, draw your box around the uh, area where you want the count done, and it would spit out the number at the end. Uh, so it can literally cut down your counts to a few seconds, which if you're in a brewery or you're doing this frequently, could really be a time saver. So I hope you found that interesting and useful. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, of course, leave them in the comments below and I, I will get to you as quick as I can. And thank you for joining me today on this video.